My dad grew up Catholic, and he became a Protestant when he married my mom. My brother and I always thought it was interesting to hear his stories of what it was like growing up in a Catholic church and in Catholic schools. My mom especially likes to tease my dad about being an altar boy until he was 17. He remembers that the nuns were mean. And he was often in trouble. When he was in trouble, they would make him recite the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the Savior daily bread, and forgive us our treasures, as we forgive those treasures against us, and give us not temptation, but deliver us from you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Over and over again, he certainly knew the Lord's Prayer by heart. But I highly doubt that it was in his heart. And throughout worship today, you will, will be experiencing different versions of the Lord's Prayer as a way to help us see that maybe we know the Lord's Prayer by heart, but is it in our hearts? Is it so familiar that it's become a routine rather than a prayer? Just words we're saying or a performance we're giving. I think I most often say the Lord's Prayer in front of all of you. And so it can feel like a performance to me. But those words of Jesus this morning reminding us not to make a theatrical production out of prayer. I love it when he says about God eating box seats. But no, prayer isn't about stardom. Those words from the message have such an interesting take. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there, as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God. You'll begin to sense God's grace. This is your Father you are dealing with, and He knows better than you what you need. With a God like that one, you can pray very simply. So prayer is not a performance. Prayer is about presence. Prayer is about connection with you and God. You can pray very simply. It's simple to say words you've said hundreds and thousands of times, but to go beyond that, is that simple? Connecting with God. We can pray simply, our Father. To call God our Father, our parent, puts us into a complex, close, and intimate relationship. To ask God for God's kingdom and will to be done means a willingness for us to let go of our plans and accept God's ways. To ask for our daily bread is to be nourished for this day. Not more than we need, not Costco-sized portions and stuffed refrigerators, just enough for today and enough for all. To ask for forgiveness for ourselves, for others is to open our hearts wide to God's grace. And to ask for God's leading means we recognize our need for God's help of keeping us on the Jesus way. And that we need help resisting evil. Acknowledging God as God powerful and glorious always. Always. None of that sounds simple to me. 
You could preach whole sermons on any line of the Lord's Prayer. And many people have. There was a particular line that I felt God calling me to as I spent time with this prayer. And that was, Thy will be done. Or in the message version, you're in charge. So, thy will be done. These words, <coughs> over and over and over, in my head and then in my heart. Maybe God was calling me to this because I have a really hard time with that one. Asking for God's will to be done I end up thinking, what about my will? I don't want God to be in charge. I want to be in charge. Don't I know what's best for me? I'm an adult. I've lived through a lot of things. I want the power and control. I want to sit. I want life to go my way. I have a great vision for it. I want it my way. I want it my way. Oh, I'm so used to hearing that from my children. I want it my way. Oh my goodness, over and over again. Little children thinking they know best. And here in this prayer, Jesus calls God Father and invites us to call God Father. So God, our parent, wise beyond our understanding, loving beyond our Hearing more than we can measure, and still we think we know better. We want it our way. And we can to power struggles with our heavenly parents, just like children get into power struggles with their parents. The parent says no, the child says yes. It locks the power struggle. When do power struggles start? Where do power struggles come from? Child development experts believe that a sense of power is a basic social and emotional need. And that at the core of a power struggle is a child's fear and response to their feelings of powerlessness and seeking a feeling of control for safety and protection. We get it. All of us are God's children, and I see time and again that we get into power struggles with God. We want control. We want to make ourselves safe. We don't trust that God can figure it out. We feel we have to be our own protectors from the pain of life, from loss and uncertainty. But what if having control, what if being in power is not what keeps us safe? In the 1950s, a few highly trained pilots in the U.S. Air Force were given a mission to fly at altitudes higher than ever before attempted, going beyond the Earth's atmosphere. They found the ordinary laws of aerodynamics did not apply. And planes would skid into a spin, tumble, end over end. And the pilots responded by frantically trying to stabilize the plane, desperately fumbling with the controls. One of the pilots, Chuck Yeager, accidentally found a solution. When the plane started tumbling, Yeager passed out and woke up when the plane returned. He discovered that in this situation, the only life-saving response was not to try to control what was happening. In our lives, we often find ourselves in situations where we can't control the circumstances, and our strategies aren't working, and helpless and upset, we try to manage harder and harder what is happening. We manage it by working harder, by buying more things, by drinking and eating too much or too little. We fill our days with 
planning and worrying and fixing and searching and distracting. But what would it be like if right in the middle of our busyness, we decided to take our hands off the controls? Pause. Pray. Let go. God's will. Often, the moment we most need to do this is when it is the hardest to do. It makes us feel like we are dangerously hurling through life beyond the panic. We cannot see that everything will be okay. We cannot see that we have what we really need. That God Himself is still creating, sustaining, and redeeming the world. Until we stop, stop our strife, we may, we may keep missing our connection with God and the peace of resting in God's will. Tara Bratch is the psychotherapist who focuses her work on radical. Acceptance. She invites her patients to embrace having a loving and open heart to whatever is happening in the present moment. She defines radical acceptance as a willingness to experience ourselves and life as it is. In her therapy practice and in her own life, she's seen incredible healing when people practice radical acceptance. There's a freedom and fullness, finding yourself released from how things should be to how things are. In, psycho in psychology and Western experiential therapy, the process of experiencing and accepting what is happening in the present moment is central to transformation. The deep and persistent tendency to think that something is wrong with us or with this moment is a prison that prevents us from living and loving fully. Dr. Brack says as we learn to meet whatever arises with radical acceptance, we discover our precious freedom and ability to change. When I hear Thy will be done. For God, you're in charge. I hear an invitation and encouragement for radical acceptance. An end to the power struggles helps us to find we're able to connect with God and to live in God's ways more fully. To be who God created us to be. Thomas Burton said, We are already one. But we imagine that we are not. What we have to be is what we are. What we have to be is what we are. Now I'd like us to return to the words from Scripture and see that here and now we can practice some radical acceptance, some openness to God's will in the present moment. Practice prayer, not just saying words over and over again, but opening our hearts. I invite you to close your eyes. To hear again these words from Scripture. Find a quiet place. Find quiet. <coughs> You're tempted to role play before God, to pretend to be something you're not. Just be here. Just be here. Simply and honestly. 
Now 